hello and welcome back everybody and in this video we are going to learn about the development of the five kingdom classification so the five kingdom classification was not just developed suddenly as most of the things the five kingdom classification took a long time to develop and the t classification is a thing which people started doing long back in the 2500 this 2500 BC so at that time also there was an idea and there was a uh, wish in people to classify whatever they see around them so why they want to classify them because if they are able to classify them then they can study in groups they can study so many organisms the properties or the characteristics of so many organisms together in group and rather than studying them individually as we know there are so many species of plants to so many species of animals and if the we had to study them individually we would take infinite time so we need to classify them it is very essential to classify things and study them in groups and what we will get after studying them well we can derive many medicines from plants well the bacteria antibiotics can be uh, made by bacteria and these things are what we are going to study after classifying them so that is the idea and the goal behind classification so as we can see that this book that is the Chandrogya Upanishad this was uh, uh, this is a Sanskrit book and this was written way back and the correct origin is not known so it is written way, way back between 2500 to 650 BC and it is the oldest uh, Upanishad and it first dealt with classification and classified the surrounding organisms into Jivaja, Andaja and Udbhija so Jivaja means the viviparous organisms, Andaja oviparous, viviparous doesn't lay eggs, oviparous lay eggs and Udbhija means the minute organisms. So that was the first classification attempt and this was only three classifications and pretty good for the first attempt and if we also take into mind the time it was attempted pretty good attempt then after some 50 years and 600 BC the another book was written known as Susrata Samhita this was also a Sanskrit book so all these classification was first started in India and it was in the Vedic literature okay so ancient scripts contain that classification so what did this book classify plants uh, this book classified plants into plants called plants as sthavara sthavara means in mob immobile and animals as jangama means mobile plants they classified it into vanspati which is fruit yielding and non flowering vraksha fruit yielding flowering viruddha means shrubs and creepers and osadhi which means monocarpic plants so uh, let me tell you this monocarpic means having one carpal fruit yielding non flowering is not existing such plants are not there but at that time people's knowledge was limited right so they called they were not able to see the fruit uh, means not able to see the flowering phase of the of the plant they were able to see only the fruit phase so that's why they call them fruit yielding non flowering but our common sense tells us fruit develops from the ovary of the flower so fruit yielding non flowering is not possible and that's right animals they classified into matsya which is fish jangala which is herbivorous and quadrupeds means in four legs the kulukara means herbivorous frequenting in river banks and the guhasaya means carnivorous and quadrupeds 
guha means living in the caves so carnivorous animals lives in caves and quadrupeds as i told you is the moving with four legs so that was some early vedic classification on means early vedic attempts on classification so this was it and it was very limited now some greek scholars you may recognize them first one is the hippocrates that is after 600 bc there is some 140 years later it comes hippocrates the father of medicine and aristotle the father of zoology they are greek scholars and they again started classifying and they started to improve as the improvement is still going on and they also started to improve the current system of classification so hippocrates and aristotle aristotle is said by some as the student of hippocrates anyways hippocrates classified animals into insects birds fishes and whales so limited classification right there are so many animals but this classification attempt was made by hippocrates into insects birds fishes and whales and Aristotle did a great job as you can see over here Aristotle classified the total living organisms into such 12 groups as you can see that 12 groups are lower plants, higher plants, zoophyta, entoma, ostracoderma, malastra, malacia, fish, cetacea, birds, oviparous quadrupeds and viviparous quadrupeds so such 12 categories Aristotle made to divide organisms into so those categories and the meanings of these are not important so I am not going into detail okay and then comes our <coughs> Theophrastus who was the father of botany and he as is the father of botany he classified plants into Historia plant uh, in his book Historia Plantarum into trees shrubs under shrubs and herbs <coughs> so that was the before Christ attempts of classification and <coughs> as you if you have may have if you may have noticed that <coughs> till now people have already touched upon the two kingdom classification that is dividing the living organisms into two kingdoms at least which is the plants and animals let us see again later see again review it you can see plants animals in 600 BC only in the Susrata Samhita uh, classified into plants and animals again did the further classification which is not required but classified into plants and animals here again animals and plants classified so people have understood that on the broad basis around them there are two at least they have understood that two groups are there that is the plants and animals and which Linnaeus as you can see holding the position of two fathers that is the father of taxonomy the father of binomial nomenclature really a hero in all these fields first officially introduced the two kingdom classification so the people were already known to this two kingdom classification they already knew that there are plants and animals and classified and attempted to classify Linnaeus give, gave his classification and divided into plants and animals and then again further classified plants and animals according to him and then first officially introduced the two kingdom classification okay so here is a list of books that Linnaeus wrote you can read it I'm not going to read it and in the two kingdom classification uh, as the knowledge of the people grew as the after the discovery of microscope people started to discover the microscopic life such as the bacteria and the protozoans so the two kingdom classification was no longer valid but still if you want to follow the two kingdom classification then the bacteria and fungi and plants are all together classified under plantae and the animalia 
under animalia protozoa and animal animals are classified but this gives a lot of disadvantages so we shifted to the three kingdom classification suggested by Ernest Haeckel and as you can see he lived for he lived from 1834 to 1919 suggested a third kingdom that is the protista and this protista contained the bacteria protozoa fungi and algae okay so he this he suggested this kingdom protista and removed all these impurities means plantae should contain plants and uh, these are the impurities right these are not to be contained inside plantae and this protozoa should not be contained inside anim animalia so he removed it and put it inside a separate kingdom called the kingdom protista and made the classification a bit more better right now comes the four kingdom classification that is by Herbert F. Copeland he lived from 1902 to 1968 and developed the four kingdom classification with a new kingdom Monera and in the Monera as people started discovering that this protozoa fungi and bacteria which were classified and all all were classified under protista was quite different from each other and the bacteria was really different some of the bacteria were able to live under very high temperatures and high salinity so they must be separated from them so the a new kingdom was developed that is the monera and contained this bacteria inside them and the rest protozoa and fungi was left undisturbed in the protista and finally our uh, Robert Whittaker classified proposed the five kingdom classification and the kingdoms were Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia as we all know and the classification goes like this Monera contains all prokaryotes all prokaryotes Protista contains the eukaryotes uh, like diatoms, dinoflagellates, slime molds, euglenoids and protozoans. Now, which uh, and these eukaryotes are few celled or you can say single celled most of the times. Okay, and fungi includes multicellular eukaryotes. Okay. Now, this three kingdoms all include multicellular eukaryotes so they differ in the nutrition so fungi have an absorptive type of nutrition as you can read over here absorptive type of nutrition uh, and they are the decomposers so they will grow over decaying areas okay and digest the food externally and absorb the nutrition so there the absorptive type of nutrition is present plantae can nutrition is autotrophic that means they can make their own food and animalia there is nutrition is heterotrophic so they eat their food by ingestion so they take their food through their mouth and digest the food plant product normally or it can be heterotrophic now the now the latest is the domain level of classification was first which is given by this gentleman Carl Woos from 1928 to 2012 which is uh, recent very recent uh, classification and the idea here is to raise another taxon which is the super kingdom or also called the domain and there is presently three domains which three you can see archaea which includes the bacteria which can live in the high temperatures and high salinity conditions they include the methanogens the thermoacidophiles and the halophiles we will discuss them later the eubacteria and the eukarya eukarya is the largest domain it consists of the protista and all those kingdoms and the eubacteria the true bacteria so that is how our classification system developed from 2500 BC to 2012 and 
will still continue to develop we hope as our knowledge expands about biology thank you and thanks for watching if you like this video please give a thumbs up and do comment on the comment section thank you